Okay, so this is 3.5. We want to talk about uh, equivalent statements and variations of conditional statements in this particular uh, video, okay? So we do have just three examples, all right? Uh, we want to use the truth table to show that statements are equivalent. We want to write the contrapositive for a conditional statement. And we want to write the converse and inverse of a conditional statement. And as we're going to see, the contrapositive has the same uh, truth table, but the converse and the inverse, um, those have the same truth table. Okay, so we're going to leave this off to the side. And now what we want to do is talk about equivalent statements. Equivalent compound statements are made up of the same simple statements, right? They're made up of the same simple statements and have the same corresponding truth values for all true-false combinations of these simple statements. If a compound statement is true, then its equivalent statement must also be true. If a compound statement is false, its equivalent statement must also be false. All right. So that's what we showed in 3.4, the equivalence of those statements. <clears throat> now, how do we show that something is equivalent? Well, of course, we're going to use a truth table, right? So we want to show that P or not Q and not P implies not Q are equivalent. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to construct a truth table and look at the corresponding truth values. So of course we start this just as we always do, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Not Q is going to be false, true, false, true. This allows us to figure out what P or not Q is. So true, false is going to be true for the all statement because all you need is just one true. True, true is going to be true. Uh, false, false is going to be false. And false, true is going to be true because all you need is at least one true statement and the whole thing is true. Okay? Now we need not P. Okay? So true, true, false, false becomes false, false, true, true. Okay? And so how does not P imply not Q? Well, if you have not P implies not Q, you have false implies false, and we know that to be true from our last video. If you have false implies true, we also know that that's true, right? Um, that was the weird one. True implies false is false. And now true implies true is true. And now if we'll look, this row right here is true, true, false, true. This uh, column, I'm sorry, true is also true, true, false, true. And so those have the same corresponding truth table. And so these are e equivalent statements. Okay, so those are going to be equivalent statements. And that makes us very happy. All right? So that takes care of objective number one. Uh, use the truth table to show that statements are equivalent, right? So now we have our variations on the conditional statement. And so what we're going to do here is uh, P implies Q um, is congruent to, exactly equivalent to, that's what the triple bars means, not Q implies not P. And this is what we proved. We <clears throat> proved this in video 3.4. And that makes us happy. Okay, so we already put, um, did this one. And it has the definition of being the contrapositive. Okay, so that is our contrapositive. Okay. So, <clears throat> write the equivalent contrapositive for if you live in Los Angeles, then you live in California. Alright, so if you live in Los Angeles is P implies Q, right? Then you live in California. So what we need to do is we need to take the consequent and make, negate it and make it the antecedent. And then we're going to take the antecedent and negate it and make it the consequent. And so the equivalent statement here is, if you do not live in California, 
if you do not live in California, comma, then you do not live in Los Angeles. Alright, so that's the contrapositive for that in symbolic terms, okay, and then in our written words. Now, there are actually four ways that you can mess with a conditional statement, okay? So, you could just switch them back and forth, right? You could just have Q and P and switch them around, all right? If Q, then P. Not equivalent. You could have the inverse. You could have not P implies not Q, okay? This is also not equivalent. The only thing that's equivalent to the contrapositive is not Q implies not P. So, these, um, <coughs> the converse and the inverse, those are equivalent statements, and the conditional and the contrapositive, those turn out to be equivalent statements. So, these are equivalent and those are equivalent, all right? <coughs> and you have to be very careful, because, um, uh, mistakes here lead to false logic and that makes us sad okay and this is what people try to do all the time I think the uh, the converse and the inverse are the logical mistakes that most people make from conditional statements and those are not the same. There are a couple of places where they are the same, but these are not equivalent statements, and so uh, it is not true for, for all of our logic. Okay? So, here's our example. Um, if you want to write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of the following conditional statement, if it's a lead pencil, then it does not contain lead. Okay? So, if it's a lead pencil, then it does not contain lead. Use the following representations. It is a lead pencil. It contains lead. Alright? And so, this means that we have P implies not Q. Right? So, what I'd like to do is just kind of show you um, what happens here. So, if you have P implies not Q, right? And this is our conditional statement, all right? From our, so what's the converse? The converse is you just switch them around. So this is going to be not Q implies P. This is going to be our converse statement. I just switch them around. All right. Now the inverse is to change the negations. All right. So you have not p implies q. So that's going to be the uh, inverse statement. All right. The contrapositive is I flip them around and change their negation. So this is going to be q implies not p. And so that's going to be the contrapositive. Okay. All right. So those are the four changes in symbolism, all right? So now what are we going to do with those? What we want to do is we want to um, write the converse in words, right? Well, the converse statement that we came up with was not Q implies P, okay? So how am I going to write that? Not Q is going to be it does not contain lead, it does not contain lead. Oh, if, sorry, if it does not contain lead, then um, it is a lead pencil, right? It is a lead pencil. Right, so I just changed around the 
uh, two statements, right? I made not Q first, it does not contain lead, and I made P second. It is a lead pencil. All right. So there's the converse statement. And hopefully you can already see that if something does not contain lead, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a lead pencil, right? I mean, it, uh, lead-free paint doesn't contain lead. Unleaded gasoline uh, is not a pencil, and it doesn't contain lead. So there's all kinds of things that do not contain lead that are not lead pencils, okay? Now I want to work on the inverse. Okay, so I want to work on the inverse here. I'm just trying to... So remember the inverse statement is going to be our not P implies Q and so that means that uh, not P is going to be if it is not a lead pencil then uh, let's see Q it contains lead And again, um, just because it's not a lead pencil doesn't mean it actually contains lead. Unleaded gasoline is not a lead pencil, but it does contain lead, right? Um, newer paints do not contain lead, um, and so this is not going to be true. So the reverse of this is, is uh, the inverse of our conditional statement is not going to be true in all cases okay so this is the the problem with this kind of logic but the contrapositive however Q implies not P this is going to be very different it contains lead if it contains lead then it is not a lead pencil. Alright, so if it contains lead, it is not a lead pencil. And that's true, right? Um, all of the things that we talked about that contain lead, if, if something contains lead, it cannot be a lead pencil. And so the contrapositive has the exact same truth table as our conditional statement. Alright? So this concludes our talk for the day, and that makes us happy. All right, if you're in my class, you want to go on to the video for 3.6.